welcome to the April preview for the Conspirators Wine Club case. Those of you who haven't got the faintest idea what I'm talking about, the Bat and Bottle Wine Club, we send out two cases of wine every three months, one case every six months. The two cases are Conspirators, this case, Tavern Batch Preview, which has 12 bottles, four wines, three bottles of each wine, split between red and white. Um, and we have a corresponding online tasting where we send out small bottles if you wish small bottles, do large ones if you want, but they're all available if you go to the Bat and Bottle website and just click on the, 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 the Wine Club tab, you'll see everything there. Um, and the wine tasting for the Conspirators is on Thursday the 13th of April. So hopefully I'll see you then. That's the live version where we do the slideshow and we do all that stuff. For Vini Curiosity, which is the next one, we do that on Thursday the 20th of April. And that's six bottles, four bottles of red, two bottles of white. And then the last tasting, it is Piemonte this quarter as well. So Piemonte, I think that's the day before it is. So on Wednesday the 19th of April. So those are the live online tastings that go with this tasting. So two conspirators, four wines, two from one producer. That producer is Giordano Emo Capitalista. Um, so Giordano, we've known Giordano for many, many years. We, we actually lived at La Montecchia, which is, he's got two estates. Well, we've got three actually, one in Puglia. But the two that are in the Veneto, one is at the northern part of the Collier Ugani, and the other is at the southern part, near Bayoni. So the first one at the top is near to Padova, it's, 20, it's about 12 kilometers from Venice. Um, and Selva San Adentro is great, because Selva San Adentro has a train going directly to Venice, which it's fantastic. So you don't have to stay in Venice. You can stay at his agriturismo and get the train there. And he makes all from traditional, well, traditional, I hate the word traditional, what's that mean? Historical grapes that have been in the area for many, 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 many years. So the first wine, Piu Che Bello, more than beautiful. Piu more che than bello, beautiful. But it's named after a member of the family, actually. And this is a wine that's been around for a while now. It's a dry muscat, which is quite unusual, actually, in Italy, full stop. You find a few in the Piemonte, but not very many. Um, almost, almost none in the Sud Tirol or the Alto, Alto Adige. Not that many in the Trento either. So aromatic, dry muscat. Very popular in Alsace. Not as popular as it should be, um, but, but really delicious. And it works so well because this area is, is kind of just sunk into a thing where they, they make Passito and they make Fior d'Arancia, which is a sort of fizzy, uh, low alcohol, sparkling white wine, which is delicious. Uh, but this really works because it's volcanic subsoils, real freshness. It's coming from La Montecchia, which is the last of a volcanic colli to the north of the Colli Eugani, the, the hills of the Eugani, which is an outcrop just south of Padova. Um, it's made very classically, so you know, temperature control fermentation, not too much skin contact. Just a lovely, 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 clean, fresh aperitivo. It's pitch perfect, delicious wine. It goes very well with things like goat's cheese. I prefer it without starch, so not so much the pastas, more pushing towards light fish dishes, white, white meat, just be delicious, prawns, this sort of thing. Um, stunning wine though, really stunning wine. And then the other white, and we go off, so we start in the Veneto, and then we're going to the other side. So we start in the northeast, now we're going to the northwest. And in the northwest, we're going to Giordano, not Giordano at all, we're going to go in Andrea, Villagiada. So Andrea Faccio is, is, is in charge of Villagiada, and Villagiada is near Canelli. Now Canelli, this region is best known for Barbera d'Asti, um, but Andrea's father, well not his father, actually his grandfather, planted Chardonnay many, many moons ago on just one hill. And this is a very, very small production. Every year we just watch this wine evolve. It's one of those funny wines which you can sort of miss really easily if you're not careful. Because there's, there's always a temptation to write off Chardonnay and go, oh, it's just another Chardonnay. But if it's interesting and it's unique and it's been well made, ah, there's, it's a, it's, it's a first-class grape. You know, there, aren't, there isn't any better. And this one is 
covers all of those points. Wild yeast ferment, grown on chalky soils. The fermentation starts in stainless steel and then before it's completed, he siphons off half the wine into tonneau, with large French oak barrels, which are all used, finishes the fermentation there, ages some of the wine there for a few months, and then brings the wine back together, bottles it, and here it is. <coughs> so this is the 2020. Alcohol, I mean, this is, sorry, 2022, I'm talking rubbish. 2022 is 12.5%, which surprised me because it was a hot vintage. So he's picked it quite early, he's kept the freshness, a little bit of barrique, just giving that lift and richness to the wine. Really is a stunning wine. Any of you are having problems with the sort of Chardonnay thing, please. It's fantastic and it's very, very fair price as well. Because as you probably noticed, Burgundy price has gone through the roof and in Piemonte they're treating this very seriously. Demand for Chardonnay is amazingly high and it's not really because of the still white wines. It's because of the wines of um, Altalange, which is the sparkling wine appellation for Piemonte. So these wines, the, the fizzes, are they're really, they're drawing in all of the Chardonnay from the region because demand is so high. Not necessarily in the UK, but certainly in Italy. Um, so that's the white wines. Very, very happy with them. Um, and then we go to the reds. And we start... You know, so I didn't have the bottle of the Puke Bello. I, well, it's in the bond. I'm picking it up later. Anyway, so here's the Caemo. Caemo literally means House of Emo. And that's perfect because it's the house wine of Giordano, of Emo Capodilista. Now, in the old days, this was a Merlot Cabernet Franc Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, very delicious, very restrained. Um, slightly stuck in the muddy sort of Bordeaux style which I loved, if I'm honest. You know, it had just a bit of earthiness to it, not too much fruit, delicious. Anyway, it's changed. It now has some dried rabosso in it, and this just gives it a brightness and a richness and a plumminess, which is it's delicious. I hate to admit it, it's just delicious. I was very cross with this wine when it first arrived, and that was nearly a decade ago. But now it's spot on. God, it's good. And the top wine of La Montecchia is called Villa Capitalista. And that is also a blend of Cabernet Merlot, Cabernet Franc and Rabosso. This one is made ready for drinking. The Villa Capitalista needs time in bottle. Um, but it, it's, for me, you know, this is, this is what house claret should be all about. It's just joyous fun. None of those hard tannins, just freshness of fruit, perfect ripeness, and just a lifting that you get from the a little bit of Rabosso, which, almost sweetness it's not it's the ripeness of the grapes but very very delicious and then we have the last wine which is um from Puglia and this is from Giustino Vecchio Sogno so the old dream um and the, we found we found Giustini quite by accident a few years ago and they make great wine you know this this wine overlooks the beach just above beach it overlooks the sea above Taranto um 20 year old vines about 30,000 bottles. Um, and originally this company, well, the, the, the vines were bought up. Um, they'd been bought up in patches, just building it up. It's a family-owned company. And this one is made from 100% Negro Amaro, stainless steel fermentation. So very straight the whole way down, but lovely richness. I mean, of the great Pugliese um, grapes, Negro Amaro yeah, could be my favorite. It's just got that plumminess and richness. I love the way Paolo Petrilli does his Nero di Troia, but these are kind of exceptions. And I, I love the way some of the Primitivos taste, but for me, Negro Maro is the classic, and this is just delicious. It's um, it's bottled as Negro Maro Salento, because um, it's not within any particular DOC area. Um, and it's great, great wine, actually. I hope you really, really enjoy it. Again, as usual, any questions, you know where I am. Um, I'm. Uh, if you just go to bat.wine, you'll see my phone numbers and mobiles. Everything is there. Any questions about the wine club that you have, do drop me a line. Do give me a call. be a pleasure to catch up. Okay, hope you enjoy the wines. If you haven't got the tasting box, go online and buy one. Okay, bye.